Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Brachiopod Lab. In this video, we'll be checking this ephemeral pool for brachiopods. So right here, we have a ephemeral pond. And we are in December in Texas. So it really isn't that cold right now. It's around 60 degrees. I have a light sweater, it's sunny. And we've gotten rain these past, past few weeks. Not much, but enough to fill this pond up. Um, I don't know if this is a man-made pond or if this is a naturally occurring ephemeral pool. However, this does have life teeming in it. <clears throat> Sorry if I'm coughing. I just got over a cold. But I can see tons of cramp shrimp in here and not fairy shrimp, but also there are quite a few tadpole shrimp. Here's a closer shot of the habitat. You can actually see a large clown shrimp already swimming by. This water is pretty shallow, only a few inches deep, and there's plenty of carbonate rocks in the pond, which is a good source of minerals like calcium. There's actually a ton of molts from the clown shrimp and tadpole shrimp which is kind of layered on the soil surface. And right here in this shot, you can actually see a tadpole shrimp that scurries by. They tend to be more reactive of my presence compared to the clam shrimp. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and grab some in my hand and I don't recommend doing this because this water is nasty and who knows what's in here. In this spot there was actually a ton of clam shrimp and right here I actually found a female and to tell the sex is pretty simple in this case when I picked her up I noticed that she had plenty of eggs under her shell. Additionally she was a different color from the males. It looks like the clam shrimp occurring here belongs to the genus Plyziscus. However, I'll probably have to review some textbooks and figure out the exact species. I do not know my clam shrimp completely, so there's much to still learn. I went ahead and collected a few clam shrimp and I'll be adding them to a container. And I did see a whole ton of more clam shrimp and tadpole shrimp down there, so I'm gonna add more just so you can see how much it is teeming with life. So for some little reason, this looks like a hot spot of clam shrimp. So usually you would probably use a dip net to collect these guys, but I came unprepared and I didn't realize how much water was going to be in this pond. And I'll get a closer look, but in here, there is a ton of shedding from the tadpole shrimp, so it looks like at one point there might have been tons of them. Here's a little clip, but you can see plenty of molts on the surface of the soil, as well as some floating on the water. However, with the colder weather coming in, uh, they probably died off. But, but I try not to step in the pond too much to disturb the habitat. But it looks like someone was already here, stepping around and looking at stuff. I have quite a lot of clam shrimps in here and one or two tadpole shrimps. I can only find one or two females of the clam shrimp species. Unless it's a different species, however, there is a mating pair here, so maybe not. Here are the few clam and tadpole shrimps I could collect. The male clam shrimps have a darker coloration with a black dot and white stripe. While if you take a closer look, the females look to be much larger and tend to be a burnt orange in coloration. The clam shrimp are honestly quite large, probably the biggest ones that I've seen. You can also see the two tadpole shrimps I've collected, which are smaller than most other triops that I've seen. 
To be honest, I've never been a fan of clam shrimp since they're kind of scary looking and quite clumsy, but you guys love them, so they will definitely be coming to the spotlight more often. Or as most people commented, they had called them the pistachio shrimps, which I have no choice but to agree with. However, despite this cooler weather, these clam shrimps were incredibly active. I will be taking these branchial pots home for more filming. But just to let you know, most of the time, I will leave these guys behind, or if needed, preserve them in alcohol for science. If not, I typically collect a sample of the soil to grow them at captivity. This way, I will also be able to tell if other branchial pods occur here, like fairy shrimp. These other branchial pods that could occur here may be influenced by different factors, such as the temperature, season, and also the amount of water present in the habitat. So collecting a soil sample is very important for me since I will be able to look at the eggs in the soil and tell if there is other branchiopod species occurring here, which just may not be occurring at the moment. So here I just have a Ziploc bag. And just the sample of soil on the edge. I really don't need that much. Oh. I mean, I already do have these species. However, I would like to see if anything else occurs here. But here it is, just a little bag of dirt. And depending on how old this habitat is, there's probably tons of eggs in the soil. Um, so it'll probably have a very large egg bank. But you know, based on the amount of molts of tadpole shrimp and clam shrimp here, I suspect there is tons of eggs in the soil. Here are some close-up shots of the clam and tadpole shrimps. Right now, there are two male clam shrimps that are trying to mate with this larger female. They tend to latch onto the females and drag them around until the mating process is completed. But other than that, feel free to watch these other shots of the clam shrimps. And this basically concludes the video, but I hope you enjoyed seeing a few pods in the wild. I really appreciate all your support that you guys have provided me. So please give this video a thumbs up, comment below, share my content, and subscribe to my channel for more.